Hey guys, welcome back uh, for another episode of the Pixel Get Me podcast. Uh, this is episode three. Uh, we're talking today on uh, same same topics: uh, gaming, tech, new media. Uh, new media is including uh, streaming or YouTube or uh, just videos we find on the internet, whatever. Uh, I'm Pixels. Uh, I'm your main host. Uh, I also have with me uh, three other people on the roundtable. Uh, but just quickly before I get to them. Uh, I'll just say that I'm a streamer at Mixer.com. Uh, I typically play uh, Diablo and, you know, Path of Exile, grindy, dungeon looting type games. Um, but this week we'll be playing Black Desert Online, it looks like, uh, if everything goes smooth on the stream. So far it hasn't been smooth, but, you know, we'll, we'll work out the kinks. Um, and we'll kind of get into why we're playing Black Desert Online this week uh, in the news. Um, so let's go around the table, introduce everyone. Uh, e Monster, we got E Monster here. Yep. How's it going, buddy? Hey, man. Uh, can you do a quick intro of you know whatever you want to say about yourself, and then like a little shout out if you're if you want to shout out your stream or what you're playing, stuff like that. Sure, sure. Um, e Monster eight oh eight is uh, my mixer name. I also stream as well. I stream Black Desert, Path of Exile, some Diablo, maybe. And sometimes a little bit of. <laughs> and you, uh, you're a long time Eve player, yeah? Yes, and Eve played Eve for about 15 years, so I've been around. And you're still, you're still playing Eve, or not so much? Uh, I still play Eve. I'm currently on a cooldown right now. I have to be on a cooldown. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. We'll not get into that for now. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let the heat off. Got it. Uh, next up, we got Zero. Zero, you here? Yep, I'm here. All right, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Zero Infinity. I'm a streamer on Mixer. I play Warframe, Path of Exile, Diablo, and now we're gonna do some Black Desert Online stuff. It'll be fun. Nice, man. Nice. And uh, also at the table we have the King of Pixel Get Me Chat, Curbs. What up, Curbs? How's it going, guys? My name's Curbs. I'm a uh returning veteran of the stream and podcast now so that's yeah nice. this is in zero and uh <laughs> zero and curbs were on episode two of the podcast so they're they've been invited back for their exceptional commentary on the well, uh the, you get invited to episode two <laughs> <laughs> well you kind of got invited to episode iman iman is reliable enough that i expected him to be at episode two but i think he had some uh some personal stuff going on yeah I yeah heard. Yeah, so so now you're almost back all the way. So I'm glad you were able to make it this time, dude. Yeah, definitely back. <laughs> all right, so uh, so first up on the topics, um, I know we're kind of like stalking. I feel like I'm stalking this game. Um, we're talking about Breach from uh, QC Games, uh, an indie slash AAA. I'm not really sure. It's somewhere between the two, uh, studio in Austin. Um, they put out, or I'm sorry, Games Radar put out an article about uh, about their playthrough. I think currently they're still under an NDA, so they're just getting little trickles of media once or twice every two weeks or whatever. Um, and these guys uh, got to play it, and uh, and they were pretty excited. Um, it it was kind of insightful. Uh, they mentioned a couple things in this uh, interview and and play breakdown that hasn't been covered before. Uh, it does a little bit of the, the storyline. So I'm going to cover the storyline just like briefly, basically, uh, there is the, the current world and that's the world we live in right now. And then there's the 70,000 year old, uh, world that was existing before all this, which is, you know, like, uh, I don't know, mythology and all that stuff. So there's this there's this veil that was put up between this old and new world and that veil is now shattered. So we have like monsters that are mythical and maybe even some of the some of the abilities that the characters wield are mythical. Um and then we also have a uh, another wild card character called a veil demon which goes around and kind of harasses the players. Basically it's a four player game where you crawl through multiple room dungeons. You fight bosses, um, and then you have this one player playing against you. It can be an actual player, or it can be an AI. So uh, so that's kind of the summary of the game. Um, did you guys read the article? Anything jump out at you guys? 
Oh, the different class. Say again, Zero? The different cl classes? Yeah, they do They do a good breakdown. Um, so they have the six, uh, the six schools of magic, which Arcane, Battle, Dark, Hedge, Shadow, and Tech, and three heroes in each... Uh, in each section i'm i'm kind of really interested at this whole arcane one because you got the arcane mender the chronomancer and the elementalist the chronomancer you know doing the stop time the cc in a game is kind of cool um and maybe even like speeding up other people's abilities i don't know exactly everything it's going to be able to do but that sounded pretty cool any which uh which character is jumping out you zero um i was just about to talk about the chronomancer <laughs> Yeah, you like the Crown of too. I like the concept, yeah. man. It's really cool. Like that's a that's a fresh uh that's a fresh thing and, and, and time is something that's hard to mess around with in a game. Uh, you know? I'm kinda curious about the veiled demon part. Like it's kinda interesting. You are such a veiled demon, Iman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just curious <laughs> about it, man. Like it's it's an interesting concept, you know, where you where you have a player that's playing with the party but against the party at the same time. Right. Have you guys uh, just changing changing vectors on that? Have you guys played Darwin Project yet, at all? I uh, no, I have not. No, I have not. So Darwin Project was a was a mixer partnered game back in. Well, I mean, mixer partnered, but interactive. They were really chasing the interactive. Uh, so you have ten players doing the battle royale out in the snow, and then uh, there is a announcer character which is typically a streamer and the stream that the streamer is in they can vote on what that announcer is going to do to affect the game you can close certain zones you can drop a nuke you can do all kinds of stuff and kind of ca cause chaos you can give someone a speed boost or you can give someone a health pot or you can make someone a little bit more vulnerable for for like 10 seconds you know and kind of play against them so it's very veil demony in that regard but it's completely wrong <laughs> because people people don't necessarily play that character right. You know, like there's I mean, a, a right way, you know, that people were saying. But I mean, if it, I mean it's kind of like, you remember the game Dungeon Keeper? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it's good to be bad, you know. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's, that, that's that bad fix. And see, that's the other thing. Like I talked about this in episode two, but like, that's something that that I feel like my stream is missing the PvP aspect, and I think this fixes it. You know, because we can still do our four player runs like we're in Diablo or Path or whatever, but then we can have like this enemy among us, you know, in stream or maybe some other streamer or something that's just messing with us, you know. And I like and that's, and that's why I like uh, I like games like Eve or Black Black Desert is it gives you that PvP fix on the side as well as the grinding fix. Yeah, exactly. And this is this is also going to have that that grind going on, you know, like where you're going to be unlocking gear for your characters and stuff like that. And I think a lot of that is, you know, they're going to be working out the balance kinks the more people play. Um, currently, the alpha is not not available yet. I don't know if you guys are all registered. I've been registered now for a couple weeks, but um, when we get in, we're probably not going to be able to talk about it for a little while. Or maybe we'll just stream black screens and just be laughing. I don't know, because um, we can't really stream it. But uh, black, black screens, which is you know words. <laughs> yeah, it's like imagine us. We're playing a NDA game right now, ha ha ha. You know, and then we're just playing and you know still streaming. But <laughs> I don't know how that works. I don't, I don't know what where the gray area is on that. Uh, Curves, you're kind of quiet. What are you thinking, man? Mm, the main thing that jumps out to me, the classes and the skills and whatnot, seem. I mean, they're cool. They kind of seem like a ripoff of some of the other things they've done, like we mentioned before. But um, the main thing that jumped out to me is, like, the move set, essentially. Like, they put it, in at least in this article, that they're doing a flashy dodge skill, two main attacks, and then three special abilities. Correct. Per class. Yep. But then it references the fact that it's, like, MMOs like Guild Wars and Terra. Yep. Well, you can switch in both of those games. You can switch different skills in and throughout. Yep. It's not select in either, and nor do you have an ultimate move, which is making me lean more towards my fear of it being almost MOBA-esque again, and I'm just not a fan of that. 
Like, I'll definitely play it, see what it's like. Maybe I'll like it, maybe not. But that just makes me real skeptical. Yeah, so so one thing they're not covering um, in this article, but they covered it on the uh, the live stream um, that was on Twitch. It was uh, Gassy Mexican. Uh, he did... Oh, nice. They, yeah, he had, uh, in his two-hour play with the devs next to him, he was able to switch, or the heroes were able to switch on the fly. Like, if you are in a room, and you have, you know, the Chronomancer, the Oris Gladiator, an Engineer, and a Demon Hunter, and you're like, oh man, it'd be really cool if we had a Sniper and a Nighthawk. Like, two of us could switch in the middle of that room. And well, be a Sniper and a Nighthawk. Gives a whole new but... play field, you know? Each class didn't have skills you could switch, though. Yes. No. no you'd have to actually switch the class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't have like from from what I've seen so far, it doesn't have like a talent tree or a Diablo right. rune type selection where you're like, hey, you could do caltrops or you could do caltrops with this. You know, it's like, no, it's just caltrops, and okay, it, it's so just caltrops with the demon hunter, for instance. That leads me to another question then. This game. How much customization? It says you can build your character essentially, and loot or so on and so forth. How much can you actually do though if you can't gear towards specific things? If every class has a set anything, how much can they really do with loot? If it's supposed to be that type of dungeon crawler game. Yeah, I'm expecting that just you know they add, you know. Uh let's say uh cooldown time you know like you remove mm-hmm. cooldown time from skills so like to make the chronomancer like the best you might have to get like the chrono staff and the chrono chest you know and then you're like oh yeah now it's basically like we're having two chronos on the team you know but not everyone's going to be running that maybe someone would run something else on the chronomancer to make the one skill just be like the most ridiculous thing and just buff that one ultimate you know so i think right. that's and then stats, just probably probably health and, and mana pool, you know, like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Just general stuff that feels like you're you're getting that increment, you know? But we'll but we'll right. see, you know, like and, and honestly it's alpha. So like the feedback is what's gonna change the game. Um one thing I noticed that they said right now, um the current playtest stats, forty five percent of the time Veil Demon wins and fifty five percent of the time hero wins. So fairly split then. Yeah, at the moment. But the more people figure out like how to break it, you know. Yeah. And they talk a little bit about balance too. So uh, I'm all about breaking it. Yeah, exactly, right? Like that's that's part of the fun. But um my curiosity still sparks on the looting aspect of the game as well. Yep. Because this is gonna be loot that's gonna be disperse evenly among players or it's going to be like poe where it's everyone it's on the ground somebody pick it up you know yeah or is it going to be rolling you know like on wow where right. if a chess piece drops rolls everyone or... rolls need or greed you know like yeah i don't or know is it going to be like diablo everybody gets their own loot and is there is there crafting you know with like shard drops where you run the same maps over and over just to get shards so after you have 150 shards you get this piece that's pretty ridiculous you know or could it be like gain money and purchase from the vendor like a lot of the MOBA games do as you progress through the match yeah that's a lot of different things yeah so so uh so MOBA wise like an auction house (laughs) (laughs) I don't know um so MOBA wise they have the uh the talk about um between uh, like comparing, let's say, League of Legends and Heroes of the Storm. So in Heroes of the Storm, everyone on the team levels together, right? Mm-hmm. Because if the team's winning, the team's winning, everyone's leveling up. But on League of Legends, you can have a guy out-leveling the rest of the team, you know? He could be the, right. the carry, the fed dude, you know? This one, right. everyone levels at the same time. So while you're getting that that fresh 18 levels or whatever it is that you cap out at. I think they said 18. I'm not sure. have to check me on that. But, uh, but yeah, so you level up together as a team, which is good. So then you don't have that one guy who's just broken constantly dying to the boss at the end. Cause he just didn't play the first seven rooms. Right. You know? All right. So then it is confirmed though, that the levels and whatnot will be reset per match then. Yeah. And I think you, 
I think you unlock the skills very similar to League of Legends. You unlock the skills. You probably unlock your alt at six or eight or ten or whatever. So you don't. You, first, you just get to go pew pew, and then later you go like pew pew boom, and then pew pew stop time boom. You know, like as you're as you're leveling up. But maybe okay. maybe they maybe they'll have like that build differentiation where, uh, like Heroes of the Storm, you have uh you have choices you know like do you want to go this way with it the tanky way or do you want to go the damage way and you can kind of choose that same shield but is it like the shield with thorns or is it the shield that's just a shield you know like that sort of thing so maybe there'll there'll be a little bit of build diversity there okay. all right all right you guys got anything else on preach i'm good sweet yeah i think we're good all right so uh so next article we're talking about uh, Minecraft dungeons, and I, you know, this kind of jumped out at me because I'm all about the dungeon crawlers. I'm kind of, uh, kind of attached to this stuff. Taking, taking it back old school, buddy. Minecraft. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, but I, I don't mind. I don't mind Minecraft at all. Like I, I have I no problem with it. I've never played a good Minecraft in a while with, with good people to play there. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and usually I played with my kids. You know, and a buddy of mine, we had a server for a little while, but I mean, it didn't really turn into anything. Um, but with the boys, you know, it's like they'll, they'll play that till they die. So like, it's fantastic to like come back and like see that the palace is actually like four palaces now connected. And I'm like, whoa, like you guys are doing a monster build. So there's some cool stuff there. But this looks like there's not much building at all. It's a little bit of randomly generated uh, maps, and with you know straight up going after loot and stuff. Instead of uh, hmm. building your own stuff, building your own swords and all that, but trying to find that ultimate drop enchanted sword or whatever. So, uh, so this was um, this was announced at Minecon. Um, this article is from Rock Paper Shotgun, by the way. Sorry, I have to attribute my stuff. Um, but yeah, they uh, they say right now it's only coming to PC. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, you guys, uh, you guys looking forward to this at all? Uh, I know very little about it just from reading this. If it does have more dungeon crawler looter aspect than the base did, if you guys would would want to play it, sure. But I'm probably not gonna download it and you know just to play it myself. Gotcha. Yeah, I may check it out, but I don't know. I don't know what to think quite yet, until I see it. All right, cool. I don't know, I kind of read the article, but it doesn't tell me much about what I can, the things I'm looking for. It doesn't have anything in there about it. Yeah, it was just like if we... <laughs> I love it. play everything. The real question is the fact that people still go to Minecon. And that's still a thing. What that's is the that thing, about? yeah. I mean, but this was... No, they, no, they, they stream it, yeah. They stream Minecon. Did you see their 3D uh, Minecraft world, man? That was pretty awesome. Totally. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it starts off with just like a little bit of uh, stuff showing like all the dudes standing here next to like a, a boss. Like a big demon or something like that. But, um, like, that's it. Like, they just show some of the randomly generated dungeons, and and that's all. So, um... Yeah, it doesn't give you much information, unless there's more information. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm going to give it a shot, nonetheless, because I try all things, because, yeah, that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's jump to the next thing. I don't know how quick or slow this next article will go, but PC Gamer reported, um that Bungie filed a mysterious trademark for a uh, for a thing called Matter, and it just has this logo, and that's it. Video game software. Matter. Well, uh, is it is it going to be like... See, the thing is, like, if Bungie's actually working on an engine, or are they actually working on a new game or something, you know, who knows what they're doing? Ooh, I'd be curious if it was a new engine. If it was a new engine, that'd be awesome. It could be a new engine because it's talking about video game software. Right. And also filed under electronic games. Yeah. 
See, It'd be interesting to did. see like what Unreal was filed under, but you know. Well, I mean, we could Google that right now. What is Unreal Engine? I was under? about to say, yeah. We could do that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's something you would build on, right? Because it has matter. Like matter is like the basis of everything. So it sounds more enginey, or it sounds like Spore. You guys ever play Spore? <laughs> yeah, so it's either it's either Spore or it's like Unreal Engine 6. You know, like it's one or the other. Just by looking at the logo, it made me think some sort of sports-esque. Like you see a snowboard game or something like that with these colorful, you know, and then the just very highly matted text on it. Just, that's what the initial logo screamed to me, but... If it's under video game software, it probably is not actually a game. Yeah, another uh, another thing it says, you know, the second classification that they say, uh, electronic game services. So they're saying like a Steam competitor or an esports uh, tournament service, which is unlikely because like, why would you go after the kings, you know, of that whole thing? Between Steam also making its own... Sh- uh, streaming service and Twitch kind of being uh, Bungie's home ground for streaming. I don't know, you know? But yeah, did you guys see anything on uh, on Unreal, what it was filed under? Uh, currently looking it up, but thus far... I am also looking it up right now. I do like the logo though. I like the I like the color. Yeah. I, I like the uh, the possibilities there. I don't know. Even the E with like the rotated uh, square in there is a nice little little piece that I I like. I don't know. It's just it looked good. It looked really good. Um, and it looks like Resetera were the people who spotted the uh, the filing in the EU. But um. Yeah, it's not do too much time like doing internet research. Um, maybe we'll move on to the next article. I don't know if yeah, you guys if you guys see something, you know, bring it back and you know, let me know. Yeah. All right. So the All next right. the next article we got is uh, Mike Morhaime, the Blizzard president, is uh, is stepping down. He's also the co-founder. So I mean, we're talking like um, pretty legendary individual leaving. Uh, a massive gaming, you know, powerhouse. Uh, he will be replaced by uh, J. Allen Brack. Um, he is the guy who's been doing WoW for pretty much the entire WoW life cycle. So, uh, so maybe that means you know Blizzard is going a World of Warcraft direction. Uh, maybe it means. Uh, I guess uh, for for Mike Morham, he's still going to be staying on as like a consultant for them. So just kind of called in for, you know, some advising and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like one of the things that I, I kind of am bummed about, like he always did like epic videos showing like, I don't know, there was just, you know, it hits, you, it hits me in the feels watching the Blizzard videos, you know, just like the way that they can totally like, I don't know, channel emotion out of gaming. For me, I, I don't know. It's just uh, a lot of memories playing Blizzard games from like, you know, young, young Pixels life, you know, <laughs> all the way through like still I'm I'm all about him in adult Pixels life. So it's kind of a, a huge, huge deal. I don't know. We'll see what happens. What are you guys thinking? Um, sorry, go ahead. Go. All right. Well, from little information, but it's kind of sad. But at the same time, you've got a guy who's been in the industry, uh, working, and I believe isn't okay. Sorry. But at the same time, you got a lot of people joining and taking over the roles. 
that have been in the industry and experienced and in the company for a long while, so I don't think too much is going to change. I would like to see what uh, Ray Gresco, like said in the article, does because he was part of Overwatch and Diablo, and he's yep. apparently becoming the chief development officer. Yep. I'm more interested in that than him moving to that position than uh what was his name I'm sorry uh Jay yes Jay uh moving into Morhaime's position yeah cuz like how many deci- how many decisions are actually made for the games rather than the business yeah. you know like the the business side is like super huge okay cool you figured out a way to finance us for the next 20 years hey here's the ceo position meanwhile like what's going to keep us making money for 100 more years you know whatever their plan is you know um you know that's the development officer like i, I get what you're saying yes and overwatch i i would say is is a pretty decent success for for a first time ever first person shooter from oh very much so, from blizzard yeah. you know that could have completely flopped and they would have been like stay in your dungeons and your and your castles blizzard nice try you know but they've they've done a good job with it uh what you got zero uh i'm oh, sorry blizzard, are we still blizzard or yeah we're still talking yes. mike morham and and yeah the whole blizzard crew however you want to yeah, I don't have too much to say, honestly, because I haven't followed Blizzard that whole that much. Okay. Cool. All right, Iman, you got anything? Um. Well, no. Like I told you, man, I'm curious to see what they do. I'm always curious to see what they do. Whenever they change, you know, people that are in charge, uh, things can go different. Yeah, totally. Like in 20 years, like this is going to be completely different. Like he could have a total different plan from what the other guy had. Or he could also just push more towards what he knows best. But, I mean, somebody stepping down that's been there for how many years? I mean, 15, 20, 20 years, 22 20 or something like that. Yeah. Long right. time. I mean, yeah, think, man. Guys get, that guy's been there for so long. He's so tired. He wants to go. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's time to relax and <laughs> enjoy my retirement. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know it, man. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's go on the next article on what we're actually going to be... Uh, going to be streaming um, this week if i could just final note on that though on blizzard or on matter yeah uh on blizzard okay and him stepping down been a blizzard fanboy since like day one so since like warcraft I appreciate what yes yeah so i appreciate a lot of what this dude did and that's about it i mean no i'm with you man so like yeah, i do i do agree with uh, curbs. I mean, I haven't played a lot of the games like WoW, you know, but I have been a Diablo fanboy. I've been... How about StarCraft? I was just about to say mm-hmm. StarCraft fanboy, yeah. buddy. <laughs> because show me one person that's not. Yeah, StarCraft pretty much I don't know, changed online gaming. StarCraft was, you know, ahead of its time, man. It was like, great. I remember, I remember uh, I might have I might have told this story on stream one time, but my buddy he uh, he bought StarCraft. I, I bought StarCraft too. We were doing our summer jobs as kids or whatever, and uh, I bought StarCraft. And he bought StarCraft after he came over to my house and played it. Um, he got his dad to buy a computer, you know, and he sold his dad on the computer because the computer could play Civilization, and his dad was a huge Civilization addict and didn't know it yet. But uh, but he really liked he really liked the game box. Like whenever we went shopping at the store for games, you know, like he'd always pick up the Civilization box and like would look at it, and like he was like, oh, we don't have a PC, blah, or whatever, right? So so my buddy buys buys StarCraft, says, hey dad, you should get Civilization. Yeah, I gets totally addicted to Civilization. Anyway, I give my buddy an AOL access code, you know, to get on the internet to play StarCraft with me. And, like, they had a huge rule about not having the internet in the house or whatever at that time. Because we're talking, like, 99 or whatever it is. 98, I don't know. Back in 97. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. When AOL was a thing and those CDs came in the mail. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
people got free accounts from those things and no, you just yeah you just rotate time. emails you know like there were more e there were more AOL, AOL accounts than human beings that ever lived um but there's anyway more AOL accounts than there's Gmail accounts man <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but uh but yeah so um yeah we played StarCraft together like it was completely mind blowing um even with with things like lag like battlenet was like so far ahead of of everything when it came to like an online service everything else was just like quake servers and stuff which is like not a service but battlenet was uh was really cool had the lobbies and all that and you could like talk crap to people and stuff man it was so good it was so good if you remember command and conquer when it first came out yeah like command and conquer too man like that was solid too like what happened to them right anyway oh it's still going strong i mean they're they're pretty fun you mean still got servers for them as well yeah but uh, yeah I, I hear I like you. but i like what they did with starcraft though. they re redid it and then they re-released it you know and people still and remastered it. yeah you know diablo 2 remaster is coming right oh don't even get me started that's gonna happen man we're, we're we are a month away from blizzcon guys we're gonna hear about diablo 2 remaster anyway oh i know I know, and I'm kind of looking forward to it, but I'm kind of not because I don't think there's enough time in the day for me to play. No, no, there isn't. That's the only problem. All right, let's uh, let's jump to uh, the next article. So, Black Desert Online is doing a uh, a seven day trial. Okay, this is starting third uh, of October, so we're a couple days late reporting this, but uh, up to the seventeenth of October. So for two weeks, um, if you do this seven day trial. Um, so anytime in those two weeks span, you can start this. Uh, basically, all you have to do is uh, download the game, reach level 56 on a character, and then complete the Awakening quest, which I guess is the quest that kind of unlocks your dude to make him do really ridiculously awesome attacks. Which is like, hey, now the game started type, type of deal is what it sounds like to me. So, um, so what do you think, man? So yeah, you're right. It is. It's kind of like the first 56 levels is the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, just like Diablo for 70, you know. It really is though, because the real fun starts after. Um, but this was because they finally reached 10 million users worldwide, so they decided that we should give it away to a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, so if they if you complete the uh, the the challenge you get the free starters package. And what does the starters package do, Iman? So the starter package you get, uh, let me see here. Let me pull it up real quick for you. And it's it's also like a good way to bring everyone in to the remastered side of Black Desert. Because watching you play it on stream, I was like, oh my gosh, how does this game actually look that good? This game is old. But at the same time, like the remaster, the game looks so excellent. Like... Tapping into 28, 2080 Ti, excellent, you know? Right. Which is really cool. All right, so just for the, the starter package, uh, looks like you're just getting the base game, which is a $10 value. So they'll pay the $10 for you and activate your account. So you play the game really hard, you win a free game out of it. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, there is some things that you're gonna get as well um, for doing the trial. You're gonna get three seven-day value packages. You're gonna get a pet. Uh, once you find the guild, you're gonna get a second pet. So, pets are awesome. They allow they pick up loot for you, so you don't have to be lazy and you can be lazy and not have to pick up the loot yourself. Nice, nice. <laughs> we all like that. That's good. I have right. I have eight pets because I am extremely lazy. So do all eight pets run with you? No, only five at a time. <laughs> only five at a time. All right. But you know, in case I run out of food to feed them, I have two more that can. I have a, I have a few more that can go out and collect, you know, stuff. But so, uh -huh. while well, the rest are uh, down. Cool. Yeah. So that's uh that's why we're gonna be playing Black Desert for the next week, just to kind of see if we can get this uh get this challenge complete. I think Iman was saying he's able to run people through it pretty quick. Um, I'm not looking um, for the power level. I'm looking for the experience, have, but I'll take it, you know? <laughs> I have been running around and, you know, kind of whoring myself out in the corner that uh, mm -hmm. I hope people get 
picks. <laughs> mm hmm. All right, cool. Anyone got anything else on Black Desert? Um, no, I think that's mainly Iman's jurisdiction. All right, cool. So I think we're good. I mean, I, I, I kind of urge people to do it, uh, at least just to try the game, because there's a lot of people that, you know, think the game's really pay to win, but it actually really isn't. Uh, unless you're in Korea, then it's a different story. Right. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is also a good reason. It's a good thing that they are separate from the United States servers and Europe servers because they have really big, uh, they can just buy whatever they want. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, so thanks to, uh, to Iman for finding this article and thanks to MMO Huts. For their excellent uh, publications of all the MMO news. All right, and then uh, let's go on to uh, we're going to kind of move into from gaming to tech, but still stay gaming because you know technology uh, is usually yeah. advancing because of games, and this is uh, a good example of that stuff. So someone thought it was a good idea to turn a Switch into a VR headset, and I think this is actually the second one. Um, the other one was uh, was a total total fail, and uh, people were trying to do some 3D printed homemade kits. But um, this is a uh, this is by uh, Nintendo Life dot com. Um, they made this thing called the uh, NS Glasses, the world's first headset for Switch, which is uh, not entirely true, is what they say, but you know, technicalities. I mean, it looks like, from what I saw, it looks like the Galaxy S9 uh, headset. Like a Galaxy Gear? Yeah. Yeah, it's a Galaxy Gear for a Switch, pretty much. That's what it looks like. Yeah, so so the the tricky thing here is, so the, uh, the Switch, you know, to be a, a VR headset, you know, you need a certain amount of refresh rate so that people don't get sick. So this is just going to be like complete nausea if you try to put this on and do something with it, right? Um, but uh, they know that. They know it's just going to be this nausea-inducing storm if they try to split the screen and give you stereoscopic vision on a screen that doesn't refresh fast enough. So they're doing this thing called color switching technology. So it draws out specific shades giving the impression of a 3D visual inside your headset. And it smooths the pixel count to give off impression of higher resolution, but uh, it's a 720p uh, screen, so it's pretty awful. <laughs> so, I mean... Alone sounds like uh, going to the theater and getting the uh, blue and red goggles to watch the movie. Yeah, exactly. Like that sort of thing. I mean, you have to keep in mind, like, a Galaxy Gear headset has uh i want to say at least four times as many pixels so like the quality is going to be like complete garbage the the smoothing of the pixels is just going to make it look like smeared image because it's already not a not a crisp image you know so uh so we'll see um on a side note also this this week they uh they announced uh that they're coming out with a new switch next year which isn't surprising because uh, Nintendo iterates on their stuff all the time, especially the DSs. They they iterated on those over and over and over, reselling, you know, a couple extra bells or whistles or a couple extra inches of a screen or whatever. Um, so we will see we will see a new Switch next year. I I know at least one person that's going to get this headset, so I will try it out and I will tell you how sick I get. Nice. <laughs> you heard it here. First, folks, we're going to find out how sick someone gets from using this. Right, awesome. All right, and then uh, moving on, you guys got anything on this? No, I'm good. All right. Um, next thing, we got uh, Google Project Steam. So Google Project Steam is basically a uh, an ability that Google figured out how to um, stream gameplay with no lag uh, full stability and uh, completely for free using using Chrome. So you can basically stream Assassin's Creed Odyssey starting yesterday. 
I believe it's yesterday. Yes, yesterday, October 5th. Um, and it's just a, a test for this weekend, I guess, just a proof of concept. But uh, but basically, you can open up Chrome, and if you have a uh, a 25 megabit connection, you can play a game at 1080p, 60 frames per second, which is pretty uh, pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah. game, game streaming is something that's that's never quite worked yet. I mean, they've tried it, and it's only worked for maybe a select handful of titles and and a lot of optimization to kind of get a game to stream right and play right because it might stream for the first five minute tech demo, but after that, it's like totally borked. Um, I kind of wanted to stream Project Stream tonight on the stream and have a stream of a stream and streamception and all that. Um, but I also wanted to play Black Desert Online, so I was kind of pulled. Maybe I'll mess around with this a little bit tomorrow and try it out and let you guys know how it goes. But um, but a Google a Google streaming service. I mean, they have the they have the backbone to pull this off, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm actually making an account right now, and I am going to go to it. Nice. And what, what were you saying, Zero? I think this is really nice that Google's going to try and test it out. Yeah. Yeah, just pushing it forward, you know. Right. Curbs, did you have something? Um. Mainly just will it work, and will it be more beneficial than running it otherwise? Yeah. But that that that's about all I got, honestly. Yeah. So so the the cool thing is. Just a final bit uh, for Chrome. I don't know if you guys run uh, Chromecasts in your house, but I have Chromecasts on on both of our TVs. Um, do you guys run Chromecasts at all? No, I, I do have a Google Home and a Google Chromecast, but I have not used it. Okay, yeah. So we we cast like all of our entertainment comes from Cast. Whether I'm watching Mix around the TV, YouTube, um, Netflix, Crunchyroll, VRV, whatever it is that we're watching we're usually casting it. Um, so the next version of, uh, Chromecast, which will be announced, uh, this week, well, not this week, but, uh, October 9th, um, at the, uh, at the next pixel event that they're having, um, announcing the pixel three, they're also going to iterate on the Chromecast. And there's rumor right now that the next version of Chromecast is going to have Bluetooth. So if the next version of Chromecast has Bluetooth, that means you can take a Bluetooth gamepad and now you can play a PC game without a PC because you're just streaming Chrome. Because you can stream a tab. Like right now I can just click cast on a tab and it can go to my TV. So if you cast a tab to the TV and you're playing Assassin's Creed, whatever, without a PC, without an Xbox, um, Google just kind of... uh, kind of one if you have the if you have the data you know like if you have the bandwidth because you could like i mean you're not gonna be able to do this on on a on an lte phone i don't think most lte providers i don't think are going to be able to keep a sustained speed like that 5g maybe when that's coming but there's there's like one 5g phone at the moment and no 5g network so um but yeah there's a lot of a lot of potential here it's pretty cool and i like the the gaming pushing the tech, you know, because that's how it's always been. I like seeing that that's still happening. So, All right, I'm going to move to the next article, guys. All right. And this one's kind of exciting, but it's not uh, not necessarily technology, but um, but it is because it's a Tesla Roadster. So, I mean, that's like technology, right? Right. Well, it, it is all technology. I mean, it's not like it's a car <laughs> or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think a long time ago, didn't they talk about having like Gran Turismo completely playable inside of a Tesla where it just like heads up displays this is like years ago. They were talking about this um, where you could just play Gran Turismo inside of a, of a race car with like the pedals and the steering wheel and it all just worked because it was a computer. It wasn't a car. Um, Cause it's hard to get those two things together. Anyway, uh, Tesla's next Roadster, this Roadster here on the screen, um, if you haven't seen this yet and you're listening to this on audio, uh, definitely Google the next-gen Roadster. It's had, it had one appearance when they announced um, the Tesla Semi and all that. Um, and then now 
it, well, it was at an auto show as well. But now it's just like sitting outside and people are like taking pictures of it, which is pretty awesome. So it might be like the only one that's actually functioning and drivable, but uh, but a freaking beautiful car and more technology than than most homes or businesses crammed into a vehicle, which is fantastic. Um, and we're talking zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds with 620 mile range. So, uh, completely insane and insane price at $250,000. But when we're talking like off the line speed, right. that's actually completely reasonable. <laughs> or production ready. Car. Yeah. Like you, you don't have to do anything and it probably has ludicrous mode on automatically. And, <laughs> uh, and you can just, and that you guys know that's a thing, right? In the model, in the model S you can turn right. on ludicrous mode and it's just like, yeah, it's a death death machine, just a rocket, you know. Um, but yeah, they're trying to bring it in by 2020. What are you guys thinking? I want one. That's All right, cool. So Zero's going to get one. Curb's going to get one? Right. <laughs> if I had the money, I would. No, you'd get, you, you'd, 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 you'd get two, a red one and a black one, right? What? Oh. Red sure. one and a white one? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll only be in red because it goes faster in red. What do you think, Iman? Right. Uh, about the uh. Te- yeah, about the Tesla. I think it's. I you know I I've always thought that the Tesla idea was a great idea, and I'm interested in the cars, but I don't really care to own one right now. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, what I, What if I, they were What if they were releasing it? Iman, would you do that if you could pay, you know, fifty dollars a month to just have a, a Tesla at your call, like nine times? Well, well, no, it's it's not that. It's um, I'm waiting for the, like there's there's an issue. There was an issue with you know Teslas not being manufactured in the U.S. because people were against it, you know. And I want to when it actually is actually mass produced and actually you know viable for people to own not only because you can own it but because you can own it it's a viable car and there's places that can actually work on your car well they they have a production facility in california right they they have have one production facility yeah they got they got three different locations yeah but unfortunately for me in maryland and him in maine it's not uh not really the most viable right Right, but no, what I'm saying is you can only buy this car from the production facility. So there's only a limited amount of cars you can buy. Right. There's there's also, you have to go back to that, you have to go back to a production facility for have, to have your car worked on because there's nobody else out there that can actually do it right now. So I mean, it's not viable. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're okay with dropping $250,000 on a car, and then you're okay with dropping, you know, fifty thousand dollars for the car that you're gonna drive while the two hundred fifty thousand dollars car is in the shop, you know. <laughs> I'm rather curious about though. I've never actually ridden in a Tesla, be it their SUV, their sports, or anything. Okay. I want to know how comfortable this is for large people because I am six three, six four, and a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. And a lot of sports cars, I sit in, and my knees are broken and through my chest. All right, so, yeah, you know, so uh, I'll say, uh, go ahead, Iman. No, no, go ahead, you first, man. You all right, so, so I went up to the, uh, I've, I've ridden in all the models so far, um, and up in Austin, they have a Tesla uh, boutique where you can buy oh, wow. solar panels and the also also the car just right there. They'll nice. just deliver it to you. Um, so I rode in a Model X um, in Vegas a little while ago. Um, they were just kind of giving free rides. So I was like, yeah, of course. Why would I not get in a free ride right. from Model X? Um, so I'm 6'2", about 220, 218, okay, okay. something like that. So um, yeah, every single, every single vehicle, the Model 3, the Model S, and the Model X are all absolutely perfect, man. Like there is so much room on the insides of these vehicles, front seat and back seat, because there is like, it's completely redesigned like what a car is. Okay. Like it is like they have maximized every inch. The front of the Tesla uh, model three and the model S is a trunk because there's not an engine, you know, like everything, everything is just maximized in every way. 
So like leg room, if yep. I want to slouch and just head room. chill. Headroom, leg room, shoulder like, room, all that, dude. It's fantastic. How are the seats? Fantastic. Like okay. the stock, the stock garbage seat, the one that you're like, uh, I'll just take the normal one. Fantastic. Right. <laughs> nice. Okay. So I have ridden in one before. Uh, I am six one. I am also. I used to be a linebacker in high school. <laughs> Booyah. Okay then. So you got some, you got some room around you. And, you got uh, a bubble. Not, not to mention, not to mention. <laughs> I was one of the top, like, highest paid uh, bouncers in Hawaii for a long period of time. Boom. Uh, I'm, I'm a guy. I'm a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> not, not as big as my buddy Bob's, who used to be, we hired him as a door bouncer because he was the door. <laughs> <laughs> not awesome. as big as him, but I'm pretty big. All right. So, and you you fit in it? And, and it was a nice ride. It was a nice ride. Okay. But it was the car was the car I rode. It was actually stripped as well. Uh, it was actually stripped of most things inside, so that okay. it would be lighter for racing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you modify and take all the all the extra stuff out. And yeah, there's some extra stuff you can take out. But like, um, amazing car. Like just even even with all the stuff in it, you know, like all the all the bells and whistles all around you. Um, they've really. I guess a lot of a lot of car companies have been doing the same thing for you know last 50 years or whatever just trying to iterate when but when you go f back to the drawing board completely and you say what 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 would a car actually need you know when you talk about leg space and head space and you want to make it so everyone fits in it that it's not a mazda miata yeah. you know where you can't close the top you know it's like it actually works you know um but yeah pretty cool so so final note on this um the uh the tesla referral program is a thing <laughs> the guy who wrote this what? article yeah if you uh if you own a tesla and you refer people to buy a tesla um you get a credit to your account um so there are several people who have already gotten uh a free tesla roadster if they want it so what? yeah like um 20 people have already accumulated enough referrals so and if even the, even this guy I'd probably have one there you know that right <laughs> I know, right? And yeah, the other thing is, like, California has the network, you know? Yeah, I mean, it stretches pretty well uh, through Texas and through some of the southeast and east coast. But at Maine, like, I don't even know, man. Like, are they even thinking about that? Like, Maine is so out there that, like, do people... I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive that car out here even if you paid me the yeah. amount buy that car to drive that car. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. The roads out here are so bad, I wouldn't drive it out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, anyone got anything else before we move on to the last story that Curbs found for us? No, before you oh. do leave, I do have to say the the acceleration on one of those cars is insane. It's I've scary so insane. I've videos on it. It's just unreal. It's for, scary for insane. Electric, without having that, you know, the electric torque without the... Yeah, it's the just go. Torque. Wow, dude, it's it's ridiculous. Like, there's no like spin up because you have to burn fuel to get that that momentum. Yep. But yep. it's like, let's go. <laughs> it's unreal, completely unreal. All right, we'll move to the uh, to the final story. This is a uh, I'll have to open up a different uh, browser here. There we go. Edge browser. So this is uh, the Edge browser. No, I for whatever reason, it didn't work on Chrome. But all right, go ahead. I got a question for you, Pixels. What is the unsung hero of all computer tech people? <laughs> That's like a trick question, dude. Like all the computer tech people. <laughs> Everybody. Like, you, you get a brand new computer. What is the unsung hero that nobody seems to to mention? I don't know. Like people or pieces? Things. Like it's no on one. Every, so you get like, a new computer. Say, say, you build a brand new computer. Uh, PC, right? Uh huh. It's got Windows 10 on it. Blah blah, or Windows 7. Let's go with Windows 7 for this one. Okay. You got Windows 7. Um, you have it all set up. What do you got to do now? You got to install Chrome. Right. So how do you install <laughs> Chrome, though? Sadly, you have to use IE or the Edge browser. 
that 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 unsung hero right there. The, the only time you have to use it is that and then when you want to watch this video on daily motion that's all <laughs> <laughs> this is the only other time this uh the edge browser has been open on my computer you guys are seeing it right here right now live yep all Once right again, unsung hero. <laughs> all right so uh rescue. so curbs I, I don't know if i'll play the video um so uh, all right there real, is, real, just as a note there is no foul language or anything like that in there if that influences no i'm, I'm, I'm not gonna i'm right. not gonna play it because it was taken down and i want my video taken down you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's that's why i'm just showing a picture of it well, so that was primarily just because the people were ashamed yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. So, uh, if, so if, Kirk, if Pixels was to play it, that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be some foul language from Curbs or myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So the Verge, uh, I guess they they did this PC build. Um, I'm a fan of the Verge. I'm also a fan of Engadget. What was before that the main guy left and created the Verge. Um, I've been watching like they they were on my my daily read for probably 10 years so um to see them have a blunder i'm kind of bummed honestly because like they usually do a pretty good job with their stuff um but yeah so so break it down for us curves what happened here in the uh, pc build video all right so first thing he does is he talks about wanting to build a new pc and well, he classifies computers as what you, you know, might want in them. As, you know, if you're going for a gaming PC, you're going to focus mainly on the graphics card. But then mm -hmm. he goes to video editors and classifies the, that the, it's 99% most important to have insane RAM and, the, uh, and CPU and uh, GPU are way less important. That is completely inaccurate. You need a lot of RAM, yeah. But generally speaking, you're going to want a very good card and a very good CPU as well. So just straight up saying that the other two are less important, period, is no, very incorrect. There's definitely a triad there when we're talking, you know, re yeah, rendering yeah. stuff and all that, yeah. Second thing he says is, and this is just a minor thing that me and Iman uh, messaged back and My forth about. My favorite quote. Is the fact that he starts off, first thing you're going to need is a table. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you are yeah. going to need a table, my friend. If you're going to no, build a computer, you, don't, you definitely you're need don't a need a table. Yeah. You no, definitely right, don't need a table. Floor. I've built then, a lot of computers on the floor with no table. He then goes in to say <laughs> he's going to need... I, same, I built mine on the floor as well. Yeah, who doesn't that build their computer build on the floor? What is this guy talking about? I built mine on the counter, so I mean... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tables. Yeah. Jeez. So he then goes in to say you're that the other things you're going to need are a thermal paste applicator, do not need. You're that you're going to need tweezers, do not need. And that you need an Allen wrench. Also, I have never I have never seen a PC that uses an Allen wrench, personally, but... I, I actually have. Have you? Okay, yeah. and it's a cool. It's actually not a PC. Uh, it's not a main part. What it is is some CPU coolers. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Oh, okay. But but a lot of them have like the multi thread, the multi everything. It's an Allen. It's a it's a hex. It's a it's a Phillips. It's a wrench. Yes. It's everything. Generally. Right. But um, he also says that you're going to need an anti-static bracelet. Which is to protect you and your stuff. It's right. not to protect you at all. It's to make sure you don't ruin any of your parts, and it's also completely unnecessary. Yeah, if you crack open a power supply, and you think an electrostatic band is going to save you, you're an yeah. idiot. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe in the aspect that he means that it's going to—it's there to protect you from the from the hurt of losing how much money you just spent. But maybe. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it saves your wallet. Okay, I, I get what you. I get. I get the. But I've I've worked on. I've built I see uh, maybe four or five hundred computers, and I've never used one of those bands. Yeah, I, I have. N neither have I. Not once. And I've built two or three, including my own. I'm currently using. So. 
I mean, I just I just touch the uh, the actual power supply when it's not on to grab yeah. myself and clear it completely. Um, but I also use um, I'm also always on rubber rubber uh, a f a rubber foot mat, so it's yeah. not like <laughs> yeah, it's like All a right. electrostatic mat. Yeah. Yeah. So he then goes in and calls, you know, the IO shield. Yeah. Right. He then just he he goes in and calls it a brace. It's just oh a my brace. gosh. Yeah. Doesn't... No, not a brace. All right. Well, hopefully this guy didn't get fired. Yeah. Okay. And they now, just... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I just, no, I got no all... you're good. You go, go, man, go. You're fired up, then dude. Then he goes <laughs> into putting in the putting in the motherboard, which he puts in wrong. Screws in. in... Oh my god. Okay. Anyway. I'll move on from that. Calm down. Calm Needless calm to down. say, you gotta check this video out. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'll, I'll put a I'll put a link to the Daily Motion video in the uh, in the show notes so you guys can watch it so you know what we're talking about. After he puts in the motherboard, he decides he's gonna put in the RAM, which is fine. That's there's not really a problem with that. Some people put it, the RAM in before they put the motherboard in. Some people put it after. You know whatever. But what he did was he broke the what's it called the link or whatever it is. he put them side by side rather than putting them spaced out mm. One extreme over yeah. yeah extremely inefficient and limits oh my it's wrong just wrong no bad yeah bad calm down buddy calm down. Yeah, that is kind of a bummer though you know like because building a pc is becoming more and more of a thing you know, and people yeah. are doing it for the first time and they're like tuning into YouTube videos and like respected websites and they're like, oh, how do you make it? You know, and, uh, you know, like Linus Tech Tips, I don't know if you guys ever watch them on YouTube, but uh, I have, yeah. but Linus, yeah. you know, he does a good job with the best practices. But like you see some of the behind the scenes stuff that they do, that they edit out where they're like, wow, I cannot believe I just did that. Can we can we get another <laughs> can we get another processor so I don't ever hold a processor like that with the camera pointed at me again, please? Thank you so much. You know, like right. and they totally right. underp it, you know, so they know that someone is watching this that has never ever unboxed a processor or bought a processor or felt a processor in their hand and like, oh my God, what did I just do? I just I'm a terrible you know, person. You know, but then in even even myself has made the mistakes though, like some of those mistakes. Yeah, um, yeah. While we all have. Putting, you know, I put four hundred computers together already in, yep. in my time, and <laughs> I've made the mistake. I've made the mistake of not plugging it in and getting frustrated because it wouldn't turn on and threw it out the window. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that too. Uh, it did come out of my paycheck, <laughs> but it wasn't awesome. But it did come out of my paycheck. No, we we it just was a good laugh. we just lost that one on the inventory, man. It didn't come out of anyone's paycheck. It just flew uh, right out the window. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was it was an actual server, and I threw it out the window because it wouldn't power on, and I was getting frustrated. And I've already been working for ten hours. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. We'll have to have like a tech support talk night, and we'll just go over <laughs> all the stuff we've been through. Um, and my boss laughed. He found he got a kick out of it, but he did charge me, you know, two thousand six hundred. Gosh, it. love it. All Sorry, right. man. So no, it's fine. I like this conversation about it because you guys actually know what you're talking about, and it, yeah. Anyway, so next he goes in to put the power supply in. <laughs> you know the rubber pads that are generally on the uh, inside of the case to stop. Uh, vibration so that you don't get an ungodly rattling sound in your PC. Yeah, he peels them off. Yeah, no, 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 no. He says that they are anti-static pads and it, that if your power supply touches your case, it's going to short circuit your your PC. Yeah, just like that's why you have to handle the power supply with like those uh, super gloves too. Because, you know, it's like... not a thing. <laughs> all, right, all right, I'm done. I'm yeah. <laughs> all right. All, all right. right. Cool. All right. So, so you, 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 you okay? <laughs> Kurt, by the fact that out. he's then <laughs> jams the power supply into the case, completely avoiding the pad. Another interesting thing he does is he puts in the radio. 
And it, he puts it in, completely just doesn't install the fans in the video. Does not show so any of So, radiator without the fans. Yes. Yeah. It does cool. not show any of that. So, that's completely wrong. It's pa passive, passive cooling. All right. And, and then he, <laughs> to put in the radiator, he, take, he uses the wrong screws. He uses super long screws, which are going to go right through. Yeah. Hey, hey, buddy. He put he put the super long screws so he could put the fans on that he didn't put on, man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, and then he goes in to put the CPU in using an uh, the ASUS put in tool. I I don't even know what it's called. It's a little tool that you use to put the CPU in, which you don't need because you can just drop it in. But anyway, and then he it's that tool's supposed to be left in there. I yep. guess apparently. Well, he didn't actually use it. Because it cuts to the next scene of him putting the thermal paste on, and that applicator that's supposed to be in there is right there on the side of the table. So him saying he was using it is complete. No, he's not. So I don't know where that's coming from. Hmm. Followed by the fact that he used an ungodly amount of thermal paste. It is coated. Like, you can't even see the CPU anymore. Awesome. Period. Yeah, so so anyone uh, listening, don't do that, okay? Just just a dot, not a lot, okay? Just a yeah. dot, yeah. A dot. <laughs> the size of a Q-tip dot. Yeah, yeah. And then I think Linus goes... Tech Tips likes doing like a little, uh, like a Q-tip, like a long, I guess the head of a Q-tip. You know, like he does more yeah. of a line. You know, for that better coverage than just the circle. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead, curves. No, it's all right. No, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> hey. I. I'm trying to get through this so it doesn't hey, hey. bog it all down. No, we're we're, fi we're finding we're finding out what's what Curbs is passionate about. This is important <laughs> times, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're getting to know you that, as a person. <laughs> <laughs> after that, he com he skips to another part of him putting the PC together, but he's completely skipped the whole fan things again. He's installed them after realizing the mistake. He still doesn't show how to install them. Hmm. And then. The last two things I'm going to say are, if you look at this management, uh, there's like this wire placement management, you know, how it is. Yeah. Generally speaking, a lot of cases have ports for like ports where you can stick the wires through and tidy it up and you use zip ties like you said in the middle. He leaves all these wires just loose hanging, like on top of the motherboard and graphics card and everything else. That is so bad. Why is it bad, Kerbs? You don't leave the cables touching this. That's so, oh my god. Hmm. And the last thing. Uh, I was asking for an actual answer. Because it's oh my god. Because he doesn't he doesn't uh, like how it looks. I think. No no. I'm asking you why it why is it bad? Because there's a reason it's bad. Well, to start with, there's a high probability that those wires could break something off of them since they're very delicate. Besides that, just. Go, spit it out. Leaving leaving cables just loosely around open fans is such yes. a pain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And now <laughs> the last thing, the very last thing. All right. Guess what he benchmarks his get his PC as? Like use what game he uses? You know, Assassin's Creed. Uh. uh was what Odyssey the newest one that has really high? No, 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 no. Because can it be Odyssey? Because Odyssey just came out. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. no, no, no. What, what is he been out for a little while? Origins is the one that's coming out soon, I believe. No, Origins has been out. Odyssey's coming oh, out. All right. Okay. So, so, I said so, the wrong one. so, what do you use to benchmark? Okay. What game can you think of that needs a CPU that only requires one core? A CPU that uh, a, a a Diablo one core C like no like no, 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 no. Tomb, Tomb Raider two. <laughs> no, he uses League of Legends. Oh man, to benchmark his computer, his quote he didn't want he wanted to go top of the line, so he spent two thousand dollars on a computer and benchmarks it in the video on League of Legends, a <sighs> game that the developers have stated only needs a one core processor that... to actually run. That and I'm pretty sure League of Legends doesn't actually have a benchmark mode, so that kind of stinks. Uh, 
Le League of Legends runs on my computer that I got. No, League of Legends runs on a on a a bag of potatoes connected with uh, <laughs> with uh, copper wire, you know, just yeah. sticking out of it. And then you just gotta, uh, put a pie display on top, and then boom, you can play League of Legends on that. Fact, true fact, though, uh, the computer, the, the laptop I have had, set that was for me when, when I was in college, which was back in 2000, my friend, and graduated, can play League of Legends very fine. Absolutely. It's solid. So, what astounds me about this is he does, I guess this guy doing the video uh, does live streaming. Mm hmm. And in his live stream, he talked to, I guess he said he had a bad day and one of the people he was playing with was asking about what happened. And his defense to it was a bunch of nerds complained about the fact that I didn't do everything perfectly and even, and, but the computer still runs. So, dude, you're too... People are telling you legitimate things that you did wrong and trying to stop people from actually copying what you did and your defense is we're a bunch of nerds and it still works even though the so, things he's done in the game or done building the PC could potentially ruin people's stuff. Seriously. Yeah, I can I can see why why Verge would would take it down cuz you know they have a they have a level, you know, of uh of nerd, you know, that definitely is, uh, I mean, they get the cool side of it, you know, that, that I think they're yeah. pretty, pretty good. And, and, you know, hiring a, a caster to build a, a PC, you know, it's smart to kind of, kind of network the brands out, you know? Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a bummer, man. Yeah. It's disappointing. Sadly, sadly that, you know, it went, it was not a good quality video is the saddest part about it. But yeah. I mean, if I made a, if I made a mistake or, I did a, a bad quality video on that's supposed to be for, let's say, somebody to learn how to do something. You know, I personally would have to own up to it and like, you know, correct that video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's about all I really had on it. I, I just <laughs> had like points I wanted to underline about the video that was I saw that were wrong and the fact that this dude doesn't even care that he could potentially ruin people's stuff and it just made me mad and i thought it was a good talking point so all right but, well th thanks for finding the article curves yeah but curves remember now he had the most important part though <sighs> that table <laughs> <laughs> nice nice donut iman nice donut i like it he came all the way back to the beginning, you know. That's 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 what the best speeches that ever were spoke have. They have that donut. Well done. But hey, Nick, you know, I mean, at least <laughs> at least I got him to laugh and not be so angry about it. Either. It's like he had that beautiful looking table. All right, so uh, let's let's go do our last thing. We'll uh, we'll do our streamer shout out, and you guys can do one last one last bit if you like. Um, you guys got any any final notes on anything? Tesla. Like yeah, Tesla. I hear you. I'm with you. Uh, I hope Breach is good. And Sweet. I'd like to thank the Blizzard dude, dude who's stepping down. Mike Morham. For everything. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, anyway. Yeah. For anything, for all the stuff he did for the company. Oh, Blizzard man. Fanboy. I'm yeah. a Blizzard fanboy. So. I hear you, man. All right, you, man. What you got, dude? Well, first off, you know, Mike, Mike McConaughey, or whatever his name is. More him. <laughs> many years, many years of fun for many people have come from that, you know, so I mean. Millions, man. Sorry, sorry to see that, you know, he's going to be stepping down, but hey, man, there comes a time when you just want to retire. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing wrong with pina coladas on the beach, buddies. <laughs> and and hanging out with your family and not, you know, working till you're, till you're dead. That's the well, yeah, part. but mainly the pina coladas on the beach, Okay. Maybe he's having a mojito. I don't know. But then, but then you get the you get the sandal, you know, tan on your feet, you know, because oh, you didn't take your sandals yeah, off, was, and then you had the lines. You get around that, right? You don't ha you don't have sandals on. You don't wear sandals. No, there you go. All right. Well, I gotta work on that then. 
All right, just so. Enjoy the <laughs> He's going to be the guy with the straw hat but what if and the, the sand... Hawaiian shirt and the socks and sandals on the beach. But what if the sand is really hot and he can't walk on it with the bare feet? <laughs> what do you do then? Suck it up. Uh, that's when you buy a watt bottle of water and you just pour it on your feet. Ah. You Man, like, so Iman, you know, just a pro tip, guys. Like, we're talking Hawaii here. You you know how no, this you know how this. Tip. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm originally from Hawaii. Yes. All right. I just walk go. around barefoot in the sand. Doesn't matter, hot or not hot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So uh, so to wrap it up, um, for the streamer shout out uh, this time, uh, again, it's been hijacked. So uh, I had a plan. So we'll eventually get to. Uh, I guess a couple of streamers that I want to shout out. Um, this time we're going to shout out uh, Breath of Variety. Um, this is actually a stream team on Mixer uh, that was founded by uh, Maiden of Ruin. Um, basically, it's a it's a variety team. Um, they realized that, uh, that there's not a lot of variety on Mixer. There's a lot of people who got uh, who built their channels on Fortnite and and Player Unknown Battlegrounds, Plunk Bat, whatever, PUBG, and uh, they uh, they kind of stepped up and said, hey, so all the variety people, like, we're not even going to stop the limit on how many people we'll invite at the moment. But if you play more than one game and it's not Fortnite, like, you're more than welcome to come hang out. So uh, I, go hang out there, I know, right? So these guys, uh, basically, they're doing a really awesome job just kind of supporting each other, uh, whether that's lurking in each other's streams or just, uh, you know, giving you someone to bounce off it was probably the most active discord i've ever seen of discords of just talking all day long and i'm i work so it's hard to uh it's hard to catch up on everything they're saying but it's really cool to, to just be part this is the first stream team i've joined um so far it's it's been really good uh maiden of ruin is the uh the founder and then uh seeker of the dawn i believe that their husband and wife and then uh kill kill plays i'm trying to see where he's at on this list uh, he's our community manager and he's doing a really good job too so basically i just want to shout out the team um they're at breath of variety on uh on twitter and they they tweet out all of our stuff and like all our posts it's just a really solid uh solid community so far so if you're looking for a uh a variety crew to hang out with um you can check them out here and i'm going to put a link here where is the link there you go and inferno ninja thanks for the host while we're uh, while we're podcasting appreciate it um but yeah so so that's it for uh for the streamer shout out um finally uh if you were listening to this podcast on uh on anchor uh, feel free to leave a review or leave the applause or whatever. If you catch it on one of the other eight platforms that Anchor throws it out there for me, uh, if you leave a review, that's cool. Uh, just a listen is also is also cool. I appreciate it. Um, and then finally, if you're watching the video version of this on YouTube, uh, thanks so much for the uh, the likes, the subscribes, the comments, whatever. If there's something you guys want us to cover, feel free to comment that in the videos, and we'll. Uh, We'll look at those and and see if there's any uh, any decent articles that are uh, that are relevant to what we want to talk about. And uh, finally, if you want to be on the podcast, uh, just reach out to me. I'm on uh, I'm on stream at mixer.com/pixelsgetme. Uh, well, we also have the Discord and uh, and the YouTube and the Anchor. However, you want to hit me up. Uh, there's there's several different ways. Just let me know if you if you're interested, and we'll we'll try to get you in on the roundtable. Um, thanks so much, guys, for for tuning in to the stream and the podcast we're going to keep streaming uh black desert online after this uh but for now we're going to sign off on the podcast thanks so much guys take care we'll see you